Hey guys, it's your humble host or kill if you prefer. So I'm back with another video, a bit of an update on the Grand Rapids shooting. Um, more stuff has come out, and I do believe, going off of a screenshot of the video, I believe I have identified the type of taser, um, and we'll go over the features of the taser I believe it to be, because it's very important. Remember how I said in the last video that if the taser itself had a stun gun feature which is used as a pain compliance tool and the fact that Laloya was still holding on to said taser and the officer defending himself then the officer would have been justified for the shooting. This taser that I believe I have identified correctly going off of the image um, and it's not that hard to do unless you know it um, unless you don't know what you're looking for um but the taser that i believe i found identified the correct one does have a stun gun feature um so let's go over the article all around tragic situation grand rapids police union defends officer who killed patrick laloya and they should um, at Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Grand Rapids police officers association is supporting the officer who shot and killed patrick laloya after a traffic stop. Now let me also remind you guys that Laloya was driving with stolen plates. The plates did not belong on the car. So it's more than likely that they stole someone's plates um, and put them on their vehicle that could have also been stolen. We don't have that information yet, but the plates themselves were stolen. In a statement, the associate said that it did not want to detract from the heartache the Laloya family is experiencing but wanted to defend the officer, Christopher Schur, which they should have never released his name because now that puts his family in danger and I just think it was stupid to release the name. As tragic as this case is all the way around, we feel a thorough review of this entire situation will show that a police officer has the legal right to protect themselves and a community in a volatile, dangerous situation such as this in order to return to his or her family at the end of the shift, the statement said. And the lawyer was being... Uh, passive resistant, then active resistant, and then grab a hold of the taser. I'm not going to play the video. I'm going to put this article in the link in the description. YouTube will either flag this or take this down if I play the video. Um, but, so yeah, Laloya was being aggressive. He's being physical. He took off on foot. Officer Schur multiple times told him to stop resisting, don't run, and let go of the taser. So he was giving multiple commands that Laloya refused to follow. So the situation kept escalating, wouldn't let go of the taser, and uh, Officer Schur had to shoot him in the back of the head. Again, a stun gun feature, which is going to be on this taser. Um, and I'll show you the taser. Uh, a stun gun feature on a taser is a pain compliance tool. Very painful and can render somebody... I don't want to say helpless, but their mobility isn't going to be very good. So the f if the lawyer had used this against the officer and possibly grabbed his gun, possibly took off with said gun. So officer sure had to do what he needed to because the lawyer would not let go of his other defensive weapon, his tool. Um, so the officer said that the license plates on Laloya's car did not match the vehicle. Laloya ignored Schur's orders to return to his car and did not provide identification before he tried to run away. Laloya and the officer struggled for 90 seconds over control of the officer's taser before Schur shot him in the back of the head. Laloya's supporters say the officer who was on top of him had Laloya under control before he shot him. No, he didn't. Because this is... So anybody who doesn't have experience in the police field and the security guard field is going to be completely oblivious. Now remember my last video because as I said, I do not use a taser on shift and I am an unarmed guard. I don't do non-compliant arrests. I don't even do compliant arrests with my new company. But still, because of the training I had just gone through with the use of uh, lethal force chart, and because I am somewhat familiar with thing, these things, and we went live on video and looked up um, some of the new features on these new tasers and they, how there are multiple cartridges, which is important because um, remember how 
two uh, cartridges or two times the taser was launched. So the taser that Officer Schur has in his hands right here, I believe I have identified, and we're going to go over the features of that one. Um, so, the police union said it's not unusual to second-guess actions of the officer, but added what is difficult to duplicate is the real-time stress, fear, exhaustion, and challenges that a police officer faces in volatile situations. Now, let me also point you back to the use of force chart. Because according, and this is, I got some of the training like in text form that police officers get. So when you're dealing with an active, resistant individual, um, you use compliance tactics. Because if they're being passive resistance, then you use uh, control tactics. Um... You don't really go full force until they start actively resisting, which is what Loyal does. Now, granted, I'm not an expert. I'm just going off of my training in text form. So, um, but anyway, so according to the training is that they speak about open hand um, tactics or open hand open hand fighting and when you have someone who's being actively resistant they usually encourage officers and even armed security guards and even unarmed security guards whose company does get a bit more physical when dealing with hostile individuals on site um, that if you have any martial arts training any military training to fall back onto that but to use open hand tactics which could be a, a slap kick um, punch um, and granted, anybody who's taken martial arts are moves that can disable somebody versus moves that can break bones and kill someone. So there's a difference. Now, it also states that if you do not have any type of physical training, whether it be martial arts, kickboxing, any type of military background, um, that you are to fall back on, um, as I said, compliance tactics, which would be at that point you'd start using your tools. And there are legalities that are specific requirements say for example we talked about a nightstick you can't just beat somebody with a baton there's certain places you can hit and then there's certain places that are illegal period um so as i said going back to the chart because the loyal kept physically escalating even got out of the car, which is red flag number one. If you are in a traffic stop, you never get out of the vehicle because that tells the officer that you're going to be in trouble, whether that's physical or whatnot, and that puts them on instant alert. You don't ever get out of your car. Um, now, yes, when during a traffic stop, you do have rights, like an officer cannot search your car without a warrant, um, blah, 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 blah. So things like that. And many people record those reactions. And anyway, so getting back to this. Because it kept physically escalating and Laloya got a hold of a tool, a defense weapon, Officer Schur had to give up tangling for it and defend himself further. Because again, if Laloya had gotten a uh, full hold of the taser and had made contact with it on Officer Schur and say possibly taken off with his gun, because at this point he was either going to fight or flight. He tried flight, and then he went into fight mode. So at that point, Laloy was desperate to get away, wanted to get away because both the plate and the vehicle were more than likely stolen, and he did not want to get arrested for car theft. So he tried to fight his way out. Don't fight the cops. Don't fight the cops. Um, let's continue. So, critically, when assessing a tragic police officer involved in matters such as this, all faucets must be scrutinized, including the history, volatility of all parties involved. We appreciate the thorough investigation and view of this matter by law enforcement and prosecutorial agencies. So, again, the biggest focus is not just going to be the lead up to the escalation and was the use of force chart properly followed, um, was Officer Schur's behavior and the way he handled it correct, but it's going to be the focus on that taser. What type of taser? What are the features of it? Because, again, and I'm going to show you, it's not hard to identify if you know what the hell you're looking for. It has a stun gun feature. Officer Sure could have been rendered practically useless with his other tools, possibly squad car stolen. The loyal had already proven that he had stolen a vehicle and a license plate. So, 
Let's continue. State police are investigating. Once the investigation is complete, investigators will present findings to Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker to review for potential charges. The police association said that, sure, a seven-year officer has not been in trouble before. So he does not have a rap sheet. It doesn't seem like he has any write-ups or anything like that, which is so far good. So he is a good officer. Officer Schur and all police officers took an oath to serve the community by enforcing laws and protecting the public. A police officer has the obligation to protect themselves, fellow officers, and the community in often volatile situations. Police officers are often required to march into episodes that turn dangerous for the officer and members of the public. Very true. As I said in my last video, it is easier to escalate something and very hard to de-escalate something. Um, the association said that the public interactions are usually peaceful but can quickly turn dangerous. Yes. The association said that subjects of traffic stops can have violent histories and outstanding arrest warrants, which might cause them to resist assault an officer at all costs to avoid apprehension. Yes, I actually had, so the new company I am working for, one of my properties, I had um, somebody roll up and kind of dump what seemed to be a mentally ill passenger and kind of take off. And uh, I spoke with the officer who was tailing him because I flagged him down and he had a warrant out for his arrest. And because of the laws of my state, the officers can't chase somebody else in a car. And so it's illegal. Um, so they had they were playing a game of cat and mouse trying to catch him to see whether or not he'd get out of his car again so they could arrest him. Don't know if that ever happened because once he left my property, I never saw the car again. Um, Laloy has previous convictions for drunken driving and domestic violence and a pending domestic violence charge from April 1st incident where he was killed. An arrest warrant has been issued April 1st. So we have a dangerous individual who has a rap sheet who stole a vehicle or is at least driving a vehicle with a stolen plate in the car, more than likely stolen itself because anybody who has experience dealing with car theft, whether you're a security guard or a police officer or somewhere in between, and you have either had to report car theft, you've had to either help track down stolen vehicles, uh, recovery, whatever, um, you will possibly find if the car has a stolen plate that does not belong in the car, the car itself is more than likely stolen. And either being taken to a uh, chop shop, um, to be stripped and dumped somewhere. So that's always interesting to find those because you find some really nice cars that have been stripped of particular pieces and then just shoved in a parking garage or in a dirt part of a lot somewhere. Um, Loy has... Oh, I read that. Critics have said sure could have disengaged or let Loy leave the scene, then arrest him later. No, no, no. Okay. No. You have, because I read in another article, that you have law professors who have no security guard background or even police background. All his studies in college, he's never, from what was cited in the article, and I forget the law professor, he just sounds like a complete moron, like freaking snub, but he had no background whatsoever with PD or even security for that matter. And yes, I'm tying security in here. Because, as I said, for me, even as an unarmed guard, I still, once in a while, have to do and deal with car theft. Now, for me, I don't approach individuals when they break into a car. I am usually the one that comes around, patrols a property, and finds stolen strip vehicles stuffed in parking garages or on the top of uh, parking lots or in a lot somewhere. And I've, ha I've found stolen vehicles multiple times. Um... So I do not car chase, I don't do any of those things, but I have dealt with car theft enough to go, no. And then when you're when somebody has a warrant out for the rest and they're already for domestic violence, drunk driving, this is already a dangerous individual who has a rap sheet, was fighting the officer, would not let go of his weapon, which I, we're going to go over that right now, and then it would not let go and would have possibly used... The taser with the stun gun feature, which again, and I cannot reiterate this enough, was a pain compliance tool, which could have disabled Officer Sure, and because Loy already had a violent past rap sheet and he already had a warrant out for his arrest, he could have taken off with the gun and the squad card. He could have shot Officer Sure. He had already proven himself to be a volatile and violent individual in the past. Now, let's go over the taser. 
because as I said before, it's going to matter what type of taser and uh, a lot of PDs, I believe, use the newest ones or some of the newer ones. Okay, so look at this. I'm not going to click on the video. Can you guys see this? Yes, you can. So let me see if I can zoom this in. Um, there we go. Now, you see it's black and yellow. And it's showing it with it pointing from the right side. Now, let me show you the one that I found that I believe to be the exact one. So pay attention to this part, this part, this part, and this part. Let me introduce you to the T7. Um, now, I do believe, because it's a little bit hard to see, um, whether or not there is that switch right here. Now, I don't know if there's left-handed or right-handed, but this looks very, very similar um, to what we have here. So this is the black part, this is the trigger, um, this is uh, where the cartridges come out. Um, if, now, if you look at the right side of this, so again, this looks very similar to what he was using. And I don't know if this is a safety um, switch or that could be the power, turns the power on. I do not know. But as you can see, that red part is not revealed here. Um, so this could be... Oh, sorry about that. My uh, housemate came up. So as I was saying, so when it comes to this taser, again... Um, I don't know, it looks, I don't know if that's like a power button and it's car, kind of hard to see because of how pixelated it is, but again, all the other looks and everything else match. It could be a older model, not necessarily a Taser 7, but it's pretty, pretty damn close. So let me read the features of this one. Uh, the most effective taser weapon it ever is now available for civilians. The advanced performance of Taser 7 CQ makes the greater confidence in your personal protection and home defense. It is the same innovative tool used and trusted by law enforcement agencies around the world. This means it can be effective against even the most aggressive assailants. The Taser 7 CQ features a 12-foot reach, contact stun, and can deliver a 5-second cycle. That's how long um, when the prod shoot out that's how long the uh, electrical current goes the taser 7cq is suited for uh, both home defense and professionals such as security personnel and or delivery drivers um, again i'm not allowed to carry this one so or a taser that's like insurance and a bunch of other legal bullshit anyway so question because we also have uh the article mentioning um, last video that the taser was deployed at twice. Does the taser 7CQ have two cartridges? Um, the taser 7CQ package includes one 7CQ uh, device, a replaceable battery, two cartridges! So yes. Um, conductive practice target rugged carrying case features. The T7 holds two cartridges allowing a backup or a follow-up probe deployment against multiple attackers. Um, now what's included in the box? Two cartridges, battery pack, this is not a rechargeable battery, um, conductive practice target. Now I do believe, trusted, oh, yep, so 12 foot reach, contact stun, which I did read. So this is still a lethal weapon with the cartridges freaking spent. So, going back to the argument that I said in my last video, is if the taser, even with its cartridges spent, because it was deployed twice and Laloya had grabbed it, if it had a stun gun feature and Laloya would not let it go, the officer was justified to use lethal force because a stun gun is a pain compliance tool, and at that point had Laloya used it, was able to use it to make contact with the officer, the officer could have been rendered uh, useless for a few seconds and because Loya already had a rap sheet of violence, uh, drunk driving, and now possibly car theft, Officer Shrew was justified. 
So again, for anybody who is saying, oh, well, Officer Sure could have de-escalated, he could have let him go. No, this was an individual who had already proven to use violence. Car theft, drunk driving, was willing to grab the officer's taser. I don't care if he's foreign. I don't give a shit. And that's actually... Let me point something out, because... When you have people come overseas and they get tangled up with the cops, I'm not saying everybody. I have begun to watch the auditors, multiple ones. It's audit the auditor. Um, it's oh god, there's some other ones. Um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, these are people who go and watch police interactions. Half the time they're shitheads, and then half the time they're really good ones. And then you have people who break down videos that they get sent of people's. Um, interactions with the police, whether it's the traffic stop or some bullshit call. So I do recommend watching those and looking those up simply because it's always a mixed bag and you learn a lot. Um, but anyway, so the lawyer had already proven himself to be a despicable individual. He would not stop. And what would have happened if the officer let him go, what would have happened if Loy got hold of his stun gun, taser, and was able to apply it to Officer Shirt? Nobody's thinking about that. Like I said, you have the law professor who thinks he knows better than a cop. Now, granted, there's a lot of shithead cops, but this is not the case. This officer does not have a rap sheet of mishandling uh, situations. So, again, it's going to come down to the taser. And the fact that you have the police union defending them, and I, I hope they look at everything from the point of escalation to Officer Sure giving multiple commands, being very patient. And honestly, I think he waited a little bit too long um, before um, doing what he needed to do. And I'm not saying he should have shot Lloyd earlier. I'm just saying he should have taken steps. Um, I wouldn't have used the taser, and again, because I'm not a police officer, nor have I had any physical uh, interactions with hostile people, as I'm not allowed to by company policy, my company policy, but I don't know if he would have been justified um, to use a baton because the person was fleeing and had officers or attacked him with a baton, it could have been, uh, seen as excessive force because Aloy at that point was not attacking him. So using the taser is supposed to prevent someone from running away. Again, I'm not a police officer, so I don't have the physical training, um, to the extent, and I don't believe I even have the full textual training as to what weapon or what tool to use at that point. Because if a police officer chases somebody with a nightstick that could be seen as excessive force, um, pepper spray, pepper spray disables somebody and at that point turns into a medical emergency. So, but that would have rendered the lawyer, because he was already a dangerous individual, would have rendered him um, unable to move and put him on the ground, but at the same time, it could possibly be seen as excessive force, um, because Aloya wasn't punching on Officer Sure, so it makes more sense to use the taser, but the taser kind of proves this. Again, I'm not a cop, I'm just, because of more training and because more I expose myself to this stuff and because of my own personal job, it's just like, the taser does make more sense to use, but it takes longer to bring an individual down because it has to make contact with the skin. Um, and at that point, like, it, in my opinion, to make the situation a little bit better, instead of Officer Sure deploying the taser twice, um, because the lawyer had grabbed the stun gun at that point, and this is a fight or flight situation, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but I would have turned to the stun gun feature. I would not have tried to deploy this to us because Officer Sure already had him by the shirt. So at that point, if it were me, because the lawyer is already trying to grab the gun, the taser, I would have popped the freaking stun gun. I would have got him in his hand with it. That's just me, but again, you have to make quick decisions when you're in a 
situations such as this, and it turns into fighting for your life and bringing down a hostile and dangerous person. So I can offer my observations because a lawyer grabbed the taser and go like, well, no, you're doing this. I'm just going to stun you now. Don't touch me. Don't touch my stuff. Get on the ground before I get you again. So that's what I feel could have been done different instead of the taser be deployed twice because Aloy had already moved the aim away and the first prods already went out so the first cartridge got wasted. The second one just kind of proved to be useless as well. So I would have turned to the stun gun feature at that point before, the, before they got on the ground. Again, that's just me as an outside third party looking in. So, but with that being said, this is justified. Um, this is so justified because of the features of the stun gun, uh, taser. So anyway, this has been your humble host, and I really hope that this officer is cleared because, as I said, we've gone through the taser, we've gone through the features, we've gone through the use of force. In my humble opinion, just from what I've seen from my training, uh, from everything else, and then seeing the taser itself, I do believe Officer Schur was justified. And if his defense attorneys are smart, I would, if I was his defense attorneys, I'd bring up the type of taser he was using, the features that it had on, the fact that the two cartridges were already done and gone. Because if I'm right about what type of taser it is, and it looks like it is the Taser 7 CQ Home Defense that only has two cartridges and a stun gun feature on it, I would hone in and it's like, no, this was still a lethal weapon and still could have been used to render Officer Schur defenseless and unable to move, if not hurt him. So, at that point, if I was defense attorney, I'd hone in on that. I'd bring up the use of force chart. I'd bring up how Officer Schur was constantly vocal and giving commands, was very patient, actually waited a little bit too long, in my opinion. Um... Because when he started to run, I wouldn't even tackle it. Like, again, this is outside observation. But had he started to take off running, I would have just put out the taser and popped him in the back. That would have been me. I wouldn't even try to tackle him again. But I just, because I've seen the video enough times, and I can't play it because YouTube. But that, yeah. So all the escalation, all the pieces are there. That racism had nothing to do with it. This was not unjustified. That taser was still lethal. Um, so an officer sure, because again, let me point out again, is you could hear heavy breathing. Both men were at their limit and the lawyer was desperate to get away and already got his hands on the damn taser. So for all the critics who are saying, well, the officer could have did this, could have done that, blah, 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 blah. You have no experience. These are people who more than likely have never been security guards or have any experience being police officers or um, anything in between. So with that being said, I'm going to end it here. Sorry for the slight interruption. Housemate came up and I didn't want to be rude. Um, so with that being said, you guys have a good one, and fingers crossed Officer Sure gets cleared of all this bullshit, and the people who are grifting and race baiting, shut the fuck up, because you have no idea what the hell you're talking about, the stupid law professor that is trying to interject, oh, well, in my humble opinion, blah, blah, he couldn't, no, shut up, shut the fuck up, you have no experience with shit. Goodbye.